How's it going everybody? Gus here. Welcome to my train room. This is uh, one of the pieces of my train layout. It's also a module for a train club that I belong to, Wasatch End Scale. It's an end loop, a six foot long, four foot wide uh, loop where the train doubles back on itself. Our club wasn't big enough to do a, a roundy roundy, so we did a point to point. We needed end loops. And so I built this one here, but I also incorporated it into my home layout. The project I want to work on today is that center piece right there. I want to change this sand pit. The sand pit feeds the conveyor belt, which, which feeds the building, which makes bricks. It's a manufacturing place. And I want to upgrade these guys here, bulldozer, and make them move back and forth, bring some animation to it. So that's the project I'm going to work on now. Let's see what we can accomplish. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's, uh, let's do some work here. Let's do some figuring out. Now, in order to make this project work, I had to ha have a way to convert motor power to linear power and to make this tractor move back and forth. Doing a little bit of research, checking some things out. I figured this piston type configuration would work best. So I had to have a drive wheel and then crankshaft and piston in order to make this slide up and down, back and forth. With this size of a wheel, that would give me about a three inch travel. So while at the thrift store, I found this piece of plexiglass. It's two sided. I only needed one and I wanted to be able to see through. So I cut this piece off and came up with these measurements here. About 14 inches long and five and a half inches wide. In order to make this move, I needed some motive power, some motorized power. I used, I found this piece right here and you might recognize this. It's one of those Christmas trees. Took this apart, unhooked everything, cut the wires for the light because I'm not going to need that. Unscrewed this and unscrewed the motor and this is what I ended up with. A motor, on off switch and power source. Power source here is a 12 volt power unit. It's a synchronous motor, 12 volt, five revolutions per minute. So this is what we're gonna use to power the drive wheel to get us the back and forth motion. So I used my scroll saw and cut out the pieces. Needed a drive wheel got that one and then needed the crankshaft and the piston and those are the pieces there that will all hook up this here is what is the bracket and you can see here I cut this out of here mounted it to a second piece right here put some spacers in here so that this could sit down inside and travel up and down here I needed a motor mount, so I found this piece of uh, styrene plastic, used a hot gun, and melted it into the shape that I needed it, hot glued it on the back, and this is going to attach to the lower side of the module, just like that. So I took these pieces, was able to find some plastic nuts. I uh, figured they'd be sturdy and lightweight. Also found a Teflon bushing. Teflon bushing goes in there and that goes on top. Put this all together so that it would rotate around. Just like this here. So I got these pieces hooked up in line and tighten them down. I'll go just like that there. I needed to have my drive wheel engage the motor here. 
I found this plastic nut, and after drilling a hole in the center, I used a file, filed it out so it was the same configuration as that. The nut snaps right into the hole. It'll go over the top of that, and now when it rotates, I've got power. This is the piece that we're going to be making move. It's a little Norscott scale models. It's a little cat wheeler loader. I'm going to take this piece here and attach it to here so it'll be going back and forth. These will be magnets here, magnets on the bottom of this, so they should attract each other through the, uh, through the layer of plywood. This one will be going back and forth. Had to make some bracket or make this bracket and line it up so that the motor could be mounted there. Got a couple screws to put it in place. Shaft comes up through the top. Then we can mount the wheel. Wheel goes on right there like that and it sits down in the center. We have a little lock washer, little nut, and tighten that into place. Tighten them up and I'll show you what we got. Alright, so after we got it all put together and we put the tractor on here, simulated, hook up the power, turn on the switch, and this is what we get back and forth motion. He's going to move about three, three and a half inches here. This will be all above ground. This is all below ground. This is all above ground. And the magnetics will, uh, the attraction will do that. Gonna have to glue some magnets on the bottom of this, magnets on the end of here. And so up here, about an inch away, he should be going back and forth. In theory, haven't ever done this, so we'll check it out and see how it works. See if we can make some motion on. Uh, above the layout. Well, welcome to the bottom of my uh, module. You can see the framework pieces here, the plywood deck. And what I've gone and done is added the uh, motorized unit to the bottom of the layout. I drilled some holes so I know where it needed to be on the, on the upper half. I did some housekeeping also. I hot glued the power plug-in to the motor mount so it stable there and I also took the on off switch added some wires to it and ran it to the back of the module so that I can turn it on and off from the uh, back side instead of having to crawl underneath here a little bit of maintenance there so now what we're gonna do is turn this on make sure that it works and then we'll be flipping it over and working up in the sand pit getting the caterpillar lined up got to get the magnets on and uh, see if it works again this is all in theory I have no idea you can see right there got the magnet glued on to the end of that one and that's what would 
that's what will grab the tractor from above that little black that black magnet right there well let's finish this video up finish this project and show you what what we've done did some maintenance off camera and such but now these guys here are out of the gravel pit it's been replaced by this caterpillar right here we put them in there because of the mechanism that we made and the magnets that are on there he now goes back and forth sometimes it's a little erratic uh, trying to figure that one out but his movements are never exactly the same sometimes he stops here sometimes he goes all the way back sometimes he comes all the way forward sometimes he jerks it's just the magnets and their attraction but that's kind of what I was looking to do too is not have a regular back and forth and back and forth and back and forth this now he he goes a little ways and he stops and he goes a little ways and he stops goes a little ways and he stops so overall I'm pretty pretty pleased with with the mechanism I'm pretty pleased with with what happened to it let's get a little bit closer and you can see what's going on and there you can see a little bit closer kind of going back and forth and back and forth so like I said overall I'm pretty well pleased with with how it turned out a little bit more tinkering we'll figure out maybe how to make it more smooth maybe some of it has to do with the roughness here I tried to sand it down a little bit but I think it's it's just the magnets and having their attraction maybe if the magnets were a little bit stronger uh, they'd be able to do it uh, you can see in these photos that I'm going to show you added magnets to the bottom of the cat a little bit of feature added also a driver to the caterpillar a little bit more realism <laughs> in scale hard to see but if you look he's there thanks for watching thanks for following along it was a fun project hope to do a couple more like this with uh, with the magnet work maybe uh, make him move it up and down but appreciate your comments subscribe like check out some of the other videos thanks